A Haunted House Story As a young girl, we moved around quite a bit. Eventually, we moved away from the tropics and headed to California. When we first moved to the United States from the Canal Zone, it was strange to see how close together the homes were built. We moved into a new development called Santee Lakes, and the new homes were surrounded by older neighborhoods. I loved the house in our neighborhood, as we overlooked a huge canyon. At nighttime, we would sit outside and stare into the blackness. Being that there were no lights to block out the stars in the night sky, we saw every single falling star. It felt magical sitting there under a star-filled sky. It happened when I was six years old. The apparition came at me in the dark of the night. My parents hadn't come outside yet, and mother was cleaning up the kitchen after dinner. Dad was overseeing my brother and sisters, and I had sneaked outside. It always felt better to be outside. I don't know why. It, it just did. A big family has lots of chaos, and mine was big and loud. Dad was always singing, and somebody was always calling out. It never seemed to be quiet in my home. Sitting outside, I was relieved no one had noticed I was missing. It felt so nice to be in the dark, in the solitude, even if it was just for a few minutes. I wandered over the edge of our yard, and I looked down into the vast valley. There were always things moving around down there, but I always assumed it was animals. There were rabbits and squirrels around, and lots of birds. I saw the face floating above a grove of small trees. The trees were around a quarter of a mile below, and I thought it was an owl at first. It floated towards me, and I could see the beginning of a neck, an arm, and hips. The ghost was dressed in a flowing pale blue gown. I saw that she had a cotton hat with lace around the edges. It tied into a bow under her chin. As the apparition grew closer, I saw she was a little girl, maybe a little bit older than myself. She smiled at me as she floated right past. I remember being frozen to the spot. She went into my house and was gone from sight in a minute. I waited for a minute or two, but she didn't come back out. Running into the house, I looked for her. Normal stuff was going on and no one had seen her, I guessed. I didn't say a word to anyone, but my dad asked me who I was looking for. I didn't answer him as I pulled open closet doors and ran through all the bedrooms. When I was convinced she wasn't hiding, I gave up my search. Everybody started to go outside, and I was the last one out the door. I was determined to find the girl. She didn't reappear until my bedtime. I saw her playing with some of my toys on the floor. I sat up in bed and she faded away. We only lived in this house for a couple of years, but the ghost showed herself to me at least once a week. She traveled from the valley to my house almost weekly. I wondered, I wondered if she was buried there. I was looking through the history books one day and I saw a picture of children dressed and running alongside wagon trains. You know, back in the prairie days of old, when people headed west. Maybe this little girl was from this era. I'll never know. I went up to the areas a few years back, but the whole area was overdeveloped. Homes now fill the valley, and our old home looks so different. I hoped and prayed she was at rest now. Who knows, maybe she still haunts the old house. Blessings. I think my new house is haunted. It all started when I found this house on Craigslist. I fell in love with it instantly, like I had this connection. So I had my mom look at it and she loved it. So of course we moved in. The house is 100 years old, and I had to have the upstairs bedroom. I just couldn't part with it. 
But the thing about that room is it used to be the attic. So all of the upstairs is just one big room. But anyways, I have two attics up there. One on the roof, and the other you can enter through a door. I have to share the room with my sister, and she made me take the side with both of the attics, which was the creepier side. There are four compartments small enough where you can't stand, but big enough to where you can fit in and sit up and move around. I guess those are kind of part of the attic too. But anyways, one of the first nights I stayed there, I slept in the living room, and I woke up early that morning when I saw someone walk by through the dining room. I thought it was my little brother coming from his room to the bathroom, but I checked his room, he was sound asleep, as was everyone else. So I was a little creeped and decided to watch TV. One night, my sister complained about a bright orb. It was small but very bright, and it was over by my closet. My mom saw one too a different night in the living room, so at that point I was a little scared. My mom also mentioned hearing footsteps in the dining room at night while everyone else was sleeping. The person who used to live here came over to get some stuff out of the yard, and we asked him if he had any paranormal experiences, and he said yeah, but just one reoccurring thing. He'd drive up in his driveway and see a girl, a girl that actually looked just like me, staring out of the upstairs window, and he'd go up to check, and no one was there ever. And that really scared me. I was thinking, is it a coincidence that I found this house and had such a connection with that very room in which a girl that looked just like me was staring out the window? Strange, right? There were other things too, but one night we had company over, and we heard a loud noise in the laundry room, and we went in and everything was in the middle of the room. The company was so scared, she had to sleep with salt. But now let's skip ahead to something more interesting. It was Memorial Day night, and my little brother was terrified because he said something was grabbing his leg. We thought he was making it up, so we sent him back to bed. He calls for my older sister about 10 minutes later, and my older sister was screaming on the top of her lungs. Mom! Help! I hear it! It's coming from your room! My mom and brother's room is separated by glass doors. Me and my mom came and heard nothing. We sent my little brother upstairs to our room for bed, and we came back downstairs. About 10 minutes later, he walkie talkied my sister for help again, and her and her boyfriend ran upstairs, and he said he heard a scratching from the walls from the opposite side of the room and towards him, and the lights were flickering, and then on the roof where the attic is, it was broken in half and open. We asked him about it, and he said it opened itself, and he can't reach that high so it had to be the truth, so I stayed upstairs with him until everyone went to bed. Before people started going to bed, my mom and sister checked out my little brother's room and saw an empty water bottle. It was rolling back and forth, back and forth across the room, then started spinning. And the point landed on my mom. She kicked the bottle and yelled, I'm not afraid of you. My sister and her boyfriend came up and we tried to sleep when we heard a conversation. My sister's boyfriend went down to check it out, but everyone was sleeping. He came back up, and suddenly we heard a door slam, but no one was there. I was so scared of sleeping, I stayed up until 7 a.m., and the next day I blessed the house, but I don't think it worked. Can someone please tell me what should I do? I can't leave this house, I really love it. And anyone have any idea about what's going on with the girl that looks just like me? Chased out by evil. 
I will start with a little background information before I tell you about my experience two nights ago at a friend's new house. I have had a few paranormal experiences in my lifetime, however nothing really of a bad nature except one when I was a teenager living in my dad's old terrace house. But I may talk about that another time. I am by no means a new age person. I am an average family man with children that lives in a small country town a bit north of Newcastle, Australia. I am probably a bit more of a skeptic than a believer in the paranormal. However, I've had a few experiences I cannot debunk even though I am a skeptic. I think that some things cannot be explained and am resigned to that belief. Now to set the background of the experience I had on Monday night, which was the second in this house in two weeks. It is a two-story house that my best friend and I have known since childhood, just bought a month or so ago. It is literally right next door to his parents' house, and he has lived in his parents' house all his life from a very young age. He is in the process of renovations, as the house was owned by an older man who had him painted since the mid-1980s. Anyways, when I visit Sydney for work, which is about a three to four hour drive from my home, we normally catch up for a coffee and chat, and if too late, I will sometimes stay over as my wife gets a little cranky if I drive tired due to accidents. My mate, I'll call him John, hasn't slept in the new house yet. He and his girlfriend share a flat and he still has a room at his parents and as the house is being renovated and has almost no furniture in it except a few chairs, a couch, and a mattress for me. I can understand him not sleeping there yet. Anyways, around a week ago, I was staying over after a very long day of work and driving. It was probably the third time I had stayed there. Up to this point, nothing out of the ordinary had happened. It had been a bit of an odd feeling to the place at night, but I put this down to a new environment, and the house being almost void of furniture and halfway through renovations. Anyways, I had gone to bed in the main room upstairs, as in a large living family room area. Nothing out of the ordinary had happened prior to me going to sleep, but around 3 to 4 a.m., I'm not sure exactly the, what, what time it was, I had a woman visit me in my dreams, and she told me without words but in a clear communication to wake up as she was coming to visit me. I woke up, and as my eyes adjusted, I saw something coming out of the ceiling. Coming out of the ceiling was an arm, up to about midway between the wrist and elbow. Thinking I was still half asleep but getting a little scared, I got up groggily and walked across the room and I switched on the light. Looking back up at the ceiling, the arm was still there. I blinked several times and realized that I was now awake and it was still there. I said go away and leave me alone, and it did. It didn't go back up as of being pulled up, nor did it just vanish, it is hard to explain, but it just kind of gently vanished. I then left the stairwell light on went and laid down and proceeded to go back to sleep. This thing that visited me and had the arm didn't feel bad, it was a little off-putting. However, I didn't feel like it wanted to harm me at all. I woke up a few hours later thinking about it. It was all so clear and at first was thinking did it really happen? And seeing the stairwell light on etc, I realized that for sure it did. However, I was still under the impression that it may have been a dream, so I just let it go. Now, two nights ago on Monday, I was there again and too tired to go home. We sat up watching some new movies, and he was talking about his new job he was starting and how about how his current boss took his resignation, etc. Just regular chat between best mates. We finished up at around 2.45 AM, and I went next door to his new house. He walked me through showing me the new paint and a few other things upstairs, etc. Then he went back to his parents next door, and I set up the couch downstairs as my bed for the night. Around 3am, 
as I was laying down and had just opened a window as it was a bit muggy. I heard definitive loud footsteps coming from upstairs. The stairway between the top and bottom floor is a metal spiral staircase. I have a photo that I will try to post if I can figure out how to later. Anyways, the footsteps sounded like a large man in solid heeled boots. I am a big guy, so I know what it sounded like. It sounded like a guy my size wearing my boots was upstairs in the living area. As the house is in a bad neighborhood kind of, I ran upstairs thinking someone had broken in and I was going to confront them. However, as I got upstairs, there was no one there. I walked into the upstairs bedroom and bathroom and still empty. Thinking I was imagining it, I went back downstairs to lay down on the couch and go to sleep. About five minutes of me laying down, I heard footsteps starting to come down the spiral staircase. As a light was on in the kitchen, adjoining the room I was in, and at this stage no curtains are hanging in the room, so it was very well lit. I looked at the staircase and could still hear footsteps coming down, but no one was there. I sat up, looking directly at the staircase, and the footsteps stopped for about four steps from the bottom. Now this is hard to explain, because even though I couldn't see anything on the stairs, I knew with absolute certainty that something was standing on the stairwell and was staring at me with absolute hatred. Don't ask me how, but it was as if someone completely visible and tangible were staring at me. But I could only see an empty staircase. It didn't feel right at all, and my hair was starting to stand on end and goosebumps on my arms were popping up. I started to put on my socks and put on my shoes and being raised as a Catholic and not feeling safe, I started to gather all of my things, my wallet, my car keys, my phone, etc. And I kept on reciting the Lord's Prayer. But as I did, I felt the hatred in the room intensify and the hatred I could feel was being directed at me. And it was becoming more and more. As I was slipping my last boot over my heel, as of a basic survival instinct told me to get up now and get out, but at that very second, even before I had the chance to stand up, the thing on the staircase heavily started moving down the stairs. I bolted up and raced out the kitchen door and through the laundry, where the only door was not double locked. As I was running out, the thing started right behind me as if it was chasing me. It was only about 50 centimeters behind me. Its footsteps were loud and clear. I looked over my shoulder as I ran, and nothing was there but the footsteps were loud and clear as if a solid person was there chasing me. I opened the unlocked screen door and bolted outside. The absolute second I crossed the threshold of the door outside, I knew it wasn't chasing me anymore. Somehow I knew. I left the door open and ran to my car on the street out the front. I started my car and now absolutely wide awake with adrenaline started driving home. I text messaged John, telling him I had to leave and that I had left the door open and I would explain it in the morning. The next morning, which was yesterday, he called me and asked me what had happened. When I told him everything and he got his priest over to bless the place. I'm still running the events over in my head and still can't believe it. As I said earlier, I took some photos while putting my boots on and looking at them later, I couldn't see anything when I got home at first. But after talking to my wife, she asked to see the photos on my phone. She spotted some interesting things I didn't see, like a misty shape on the stairs exactly where I could sense the thing standing. And in one picture, a full-bodied form standing in the corner of the room, in a kind of cloak. After seeing this, I sent it to John and asked him what it was in the corner, and he told me there is nothing physically there, as the corner was being prepped for painting. This is my second submission on the site. I mentioned in the first one that I had a few unexplained things happen while I was growing up. I will first explain the house and its layout, 
as the main incident of this submission will be better understood that way. I grew up in the inner west of Sydney, our house that my dad still lives in this day, is a very old brick Victorian terrace. At the back of his house is the main city stormwater drain, and the house is in a row of ten houses. They were all originally built as workers' cottages for the men who built the drain system. The house is a two-story small house with a two-bedroom upstairs, and downstairs is one main living room that the front door is in with an open doorway to the kitchen. Then, a halfway that has the bathroom and a small laundry off it. From the front room, you can basically see in a straight line to the back door. It is parallel with the front door. Now the main incident. One night, I was visiting dad with my brother. I was around 19 or so at the time. This would have been around 1993 or 1994. We all had a great boys day out fishing, and after a good meal, all went home to dad's and went to bed. Dad and my brother Daniel were both upstairs while I slept downstairs on the pull-out sofa bed. For some reason, in the middle of the night, I woke up and had a feeling to look down the hallway. As I looked, I saw a pure black man standing there. He was looking straight ahead at the pantry that was against the wall. Then, he slowly turned his head to look at me. Even though I couldn't see his face, I knew absolutely that he had a manacle smile on his face. At the same time, he opened up the knife drawer and started to pull out a carving knife. It was at this point that I jumped up and screamed out. Both my dad and brother raced up out of their beds and down the stairs. As they were coming down, the figure just vanished. I told them what I'd seen, and my dad said, Come on, mate, it was just a bad dream. I thought about it for a second, and started to think that he may be right, when my brother called us into the kitchen to show us that the knife drawer was open. None of us would ever leave the drawer open because not only do you have to walk down past it to get to the only bathroom, and there would be a good chance that you would hit it or bump it. We were all buggered by the time we got home, and basically went straight to bed. This incident has stuck in my head for over 20 years now. There were other things that happened to me in the house, but a lot were around my brother when we were kids. This one was certainly the one that stuck with me. Sorry for it being such a long story, but I wanted to try to explain the details so everyone can picture it. <laughs>